Okay, so in this final video for the Functions and Relations um, unit, we want to have a look at some modelling problems um, requiring us to set up functions to describe the situation. Um, so we have here, um, we're just going to work through two examples. The first example, we have a ball is dropped from a height of 2 metres and on each rebound, the ball rises to a height that is 80% of its previous bounce. Complete the following tables of val table of values. Okay, so... 2 metres uh, is where it's dropped from, so after no bounces, it, the height it reaches is 2 metres. After one bounce, it's going to return to only 80% of its previous height. Okay, So therefore, after one bounce, it's going to be 80% of its previous height, so 1.6 metres. Okay? After two bounces, it's going to be 80% of its previous height, so 1.6 times 0.8 which is 1.28 metres. On its third bounce, we're going to take its second bounce and find 80% of that, so times 0.8. That is 1.024 metres. On its fourth bounce, 1.024, multiply that by 0.8 again. Um, so 0.8192 metres. And we can continue. 0.8192, 80% of that for the fifth bounce. So 0.65536 metres. Um, and then 80% of that. 0.65536 times 0.8 is point, oops, sorry, point away my pen, 0.5252, meters, 0.524288 meters times 0.8 is 0.419430 meters. Okay, and we could go on and on and on forever. So obviously the bounce height is getting smaller and smaller each time. But 0.8 of something is always still going to be something. So technically speaking, um, it's going to this pattern will go on and on forever. However, the ball has radius, and there'll be some point where the bounce height becomes less than the actual radius of the ball, and therefore the ball is, for all um, practical intents and purposes, actually lying on the ground. Um, we want to now be able to construct a formula from this. Okay, so I, I want to go back and rethink how I constructed that table of values. So rather than thinking about the third bounce as being the second bounce times by 0.8, let's think about by the third bounce, so we're, gonna, we're, we're timesing by 0.8 and then we're timesing by 0.8 again. So the third bounce is actually two lots of, uh, sorry, two times 0.8 times 0.8, which means it is two times 0.8 squared. Okay, the third bounce similarly, we'll if, we've, if we think how, how does it change from the original bounce height of two meters, started with two meters, and we then times by 0.8 to get the first bounce height, 0.8 again to get the second bounce height, and 0.8 again to get the third bounce height. So it's two times 0.8 cubed for the third bounce height. Same logic for the fourth bounce height. We've taken the original two meter height, multiplied that by 0.8 four times, so 0.8 to the power of four. This is 2 times 0.8 to the power of 5. This is going to be 2 times 0.8 to the power of 6. This is going to be 2 times 0.8 to the power of 7. Let's check that. 2 times 0.8 to the power of 7. Yeah, correct. Okay, so let's think about making a rule then. So um, the height is going to be 2 metres multiplied by 0.8 to the power of n, which is the number of bounces. And we might write it in function notation. So h of n, the height after n bounces, is 2 times 0.8 to the power of n. Use your CAS to help you graph the function, stating its domain and range. OK, so let's have a look then. So if I want to graph with my CAS, I need to use x rather than n. So 2 times 0.8 to the power of x. And that's sort of matching what we saw in our points. It's just we don't really need so much down there. Nor back there, really. Okay, so we're essentially seeing... Let me just make that scale 1. 
that um, the height starts at zero, okay, and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And as I, we discussed, it, it's never actually going to get to zero. In terms of practicality, um, it will, but it um, won't. Now, the other thing is, is we're not interested in, interested, sorry, in drawing the graph back on the left-hand side of the y-axis because that would be where n is negative. And we can't have a negative number of bounces. So in terms of practicality, okay, there is some domain restrictions happening here. So it starts here at 0, 2. Okay, it's an included point. And then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. We might just put one of our points on to give a reference point. Um, so you could put, you know, whichever one you want, 1, 1 1.6, something like that. Or you could pick a different point, it doesn't matter. So this is my n axis. This is my H axis, and then we can think about the domain of H. Um, so my function is called H, and its domain, its input values, uh, everything from zero up to infinity, technically, although practically there would be a limit that we wouldn't keep going on and on forever, um, but we don't have the information to know that here. The range of function H um, goes from now, it goes from zero, it doesn't include zero though, because actually what's happening with this graph shape is we have an asymptote happening at zero. This is an exponential graph and we'll talk about this in our next topic. Um, so it goes from zero up to two and includes two. Okay, let's have a look at the second example. We need to again formulate um, the formula, formulate the function that describes what's happening. Small packets of biscuits with a mass of 11 grams are sold in bulk packets through a warehouse. The bulk packets contain between 12 and 18 of the smaller packets. If W grams is the mass of the bulk packet containing S smaller packets and the mass of the bulk packaging is 4 grams, construct a function for the total mass of the bulk packet. State the domain and range of the function and illustrate this function on a graph. Okay, so we want to describe W in terms of S. So our function is going to be W of S. Okay, the weight or the mass of a bulk packet in terms of the number of small packets that it contains. Okay, so we know that the bulk packet um, consists of its packaging, which weighs 4 grams. So it's definitely going to be that mass. Okay, plus... Um, however many small packets we have and each of those weighs 11 grams so 11, 4 grams for the total packaging of the bulk packaging plus 11 which is the 11 grams times the number of small packets and we don't know how many small packets we have but we do know that there will be somewhere between 12 and 18 small packets okay so that's essentially the domain so we've got our rule w of s is 4 plus 11 s the domain of W is going to be 12 to 18 inclusive and therefore the range of W we're going to need to think about what that means okay so if we think about this particular rule it is a linear graph um, you know S and W um, start y intercept is 4 um, and then you know gradient is 11 So pretty steep. Okay, so we don't want to look at this whole graph. We only want to look at this graph, um, and I haven't got very good scale here, but we only want to look at this between 12 and 18. And so therefore, the range is going to be about thinking about when S equals 12, what does W equal? Okay, so um, W of 12 is 4 plus 11 times 12. So um, 4 plus should be 132, so that'll be 136, yep. And W of 18 is 4 plus 11 times 18. So 4 plus 11, sorry, 4 plus 11 times 18 is 202. And so therefore that would be the point 18202, this would be the point 12136, and so therefore that tells us about the, sorry, that shouldn't be in brackets, the range range of W is going to be from 136 
up to 202 inclusive. Now the other thing to be mindful of is that technically the domain isn't everything between 12 and 18. It's only actually going to be integer values between 12 and 18. Um, but for all intents and purposes here, we can describe the function this way and know that we are only interested in s being equal to integer values. Okay, so the work today is from exercise 4e, all of those, so looking at formulating um, functions to describe or to model situations.